from the uh, Salmon Center. It's Seth Elson. Good morning, sir. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. I tell you what, this uh, Saturday night, you finally got me to get out to the old Union River uh, Chum Trap for the uh, counting of the fish that you do annually. Uh, what, August through October? August through October, yeah. So this was uh, quite a deal, and uh, Steph and I were not quite sure what we were getting ourselves into. Uh, we had two great helpers there. Mike and Devin uh, were there as well working on the overnight shift, and they were the pros. So they were giving us the, the ropes on this thing. But it is uh, amazing uh, between the end of the the shift before us from t at 10 or whatever till 10 30 was when we went out and checked 20 fish came in yeah it's been nuts though uh, this past week we've gotten reports from some of our volunteers of uh, over 120 fish in an hour um, we had a volunteer just this past sunday afternoon about from i think she had gone 3 30 to 4 checked the trap at 4 and and had almost 100 fish in there so oh my god uh, with this first rain it's really starting to push those fish up and um, so definitely underscores the need we still have for volunteers. We've got another month left on that project. So and it's pr uh, it is uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, you know, you get out there and you get the fish come in the net the, in the pen. You grab the net there and and try to wrangle them out there. Those things are heavy. They are, and we're we're seeing some bigger fish this year too. Usually our our summer chum seem to be a little bit smaller in size, but this year we've seen some pictures of real hogs out there. Yeah, from, it from some of the volunteers. She though. she was having a hard time lifting some. I was having a hard time lifting some out of there, and it was really cool then because uh, they're flip flopping, splashing around, wanting they going, what the heck is happening right now? But then you're able to tell, like I didn't know beforehand that you know you see some vertical stripes of purple or black. And that kind of leads you to believe it's a male chum and yep. stuff like that. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to another time on uh, in the in the day to uh, bring the kid down to. And it was a really fun experience. Thank you for dogging me on it for so <laughs> many years and getting out there and finally doing it. it was Glad fun. we got you down there. It was a lot of fun. What else are we talking about today? Yeah, I just wanted to chat a little bit about our, our new efforts to uh, try to control noxious weeds uh, throughout Hood Canal. Okay. So we've got a, a new uh, effort funded by the uh, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation uh, called the Hood Canal Cooperative Weed Management Area. And so it's kind of a long name, but <clears throat> what it is is essentially an attempt for, for us to coordinate with our partners throughout the canal to, to better manage uh, our noxious weeds. And so, you know, unfortunately, our natural resources don't really follow political boundaries. And so here in Hood Canal, we've got Mason, Jefferson, Kitsap County. And so uh, this kind of helps us to, to uh, develop more collaborative partnerships and prioritize on a watershed level, on a regional level um, with those partners. Is it easy to uh, be able to show folks from the different counties. Listen, here's the deal. It not it impacts all of us here. We should all collaborate and let's take care of this. Yeah, like I said, you know, we all understand how how watersheds work and how you know if you don't take care of it in one place, it's going to spread to another. And um, and so this program has been really great. We have uh, a WCC crew, so Washington Conservation Corps. Um, that goes out in the streams and does surveys trying to locate these noxious weeds and we map it out in the office and and get it out there and then these partners help us and uh, to kind of prioritize those efforts and where to spend crew time things like that I mean you guys have been doing this <clears throat> and you do it yearly annually and so these things still come back and even if you think you get them all the way, they, they may not be all, the, all gone? Certainly, yeah. So we're going on almost uh, uh, year 10 of our knotweed control efforts, and this sort of builds on it. So in addition to knotweed, we're also looking at um, some different uh, invasive weeds, so things like hogweed. Um, we've got a few others, like ivy is a big priority for us right now. So so those, as well, you know, in addition to knotweed as well. So. Just kind of like the regular ivy that people see climbing on buildings and things? Yeah, that can be some of it, too. Wow. So what does that do? Is It it just overtakes things, and, and just like a lot of other um, invasives, starts to outcompete others and, and really reduces habitat diversity, and that's the same thing with, with knotweed, for instance, and so it's real detrimental to, to salmon. And, um, you know, we make these great strides each year, but uh, this whole program, a lot of our noxious weed control efforts really rely on on partnerships with landowners um, and so each year we're trying to get new partnerships on board because we'll we might have luck lower in the watershed but if we don't develop those partnerships with uh, pe people who live higher up on the river it's just going to continue to spread down and and kind of negate our efforts and so wow. um, our landowner outreach is key and always trying to get our crews out to do site visits with residents who are interested to learn more about what noxious weeds they might have what native plants might work well to to take their place things like that so Talking to Seth Elson here from the Salmon Center during Environmentally Sound, brought to you by Mason County Garbage. When you remove these invasive species, 
uh, what do you replace the uh, area with? Because I'd imagine if you replace them or you pull them out but you don't do anything, they'll just come quicker Ex right back. Yeah, exactly. And so what we do is usually we'll go and we'll try to do these removal efforts and then follow up in the, in the winter with native plantings. And so it really varies by um, the location of your house, um, where your property is, how close to the stream, things like that. And uh, what we do, we have Tamara. She's kind of our, our in-house plant expert. Um, she'll come out and she does site visits with landowners to really figure out what the best um, things would be. And she'll she'll put together a planting plan and, and get you some great native plants. Um, and we've actually got a really great resource. It's called uh, TakeControlPlantNative.org. And it's got uh, all sorts of great information on invasives and hood canal, some great native plants that work really well here in the canal, and as well as some resources to get you connected with any of the noxious weed um, folks here in the area, like Pat Grover, who's, who's uh, here for the county, the conservation district, um, us in Belfair, things like that. And so a great uh, resource for landowners. If you uh, don't decide to pull these noxious weeds out uh, by yourself or with the help, but you decide to plant uh native plants all around it will them being native eventually push out the noxious plants or um again it, it's kind of very species by species but uh, unfortunately a lot of our invasives are are that bad that um, even with that without actually removing the the invasive they'll just find ways to continue to spread so um you know we definitely really encourage landowners and, and others to give us a call and and uh, you know, have us or one of our partners in the in the weed management area come out and just take a look and see how we can help you. And it, you know, it doesn't often take much to get it out, and it'll go a long ways. You can find more at uh, pnwsalmoncenter.org, bringing the world of salmon and people together for all generations. Great to find uh, information up there. And again, if you're interested in uh, helping out and volunteering at the Chum Trap, there are links on the website to the uh, schedules. And you often will see on the Facebook, too, if there's openings yep. and, and the need for people that uh, check it out. Definitely it is a cool experience. And uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into. <laughs> But by the uh, end of just that short uh, hour that we were there uh, before we left it to the pros, uh, it was it was pretty cool. It was pretty eye opening. What the other thing that was so neat uh, is that you're there uh, pulling the fish out. You determine their sex and then you let them go. But then right behind you is a little area that's cordoned off. Yep. And they're spawning right there. Yeah. So it's really cool. Just something else to point out. I appreciate you bringing that up. Is uh, yeah, we've got a little area flagged where they've actually got a red going. So red's kind of the the salmon's um, egg nest essentially, for lack of better terms. Um, but yeah, it's a great place to go down. You know, we've got volunteers there 24/7. So if you're in the North Mason area or you want them to take a drive. It's kind of one of the first places you'll see fish spawning in Hood Canal. And so you go down to our trap site just right there. And um, just last Friday alone, I think I counted probably something like, I don't know, 20 fish, 25 fish just hanging out right by the trap, um, just kind of starting that process. And so I'm sure we'll start to see a few more reds here soon. But um, it's a really cool area for the community to stop by and um, great outreach for us. Yeah, you take a left there at the QFC in Belfair. That's Highway 300. Uh, Right over the bridge, it's just right over the bridge, right to the left there, you'll see a little reader board that kind of gives the number. And if you've gotten to the uh, union, uh, or the substation there, you've gone too far, yep. so just turn around, come on back. So very cool. Well, thank you, Seth. Always good talking with you, and uh, we'll talk again next time. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on. Environmentally Sound, once again, brought to you by Mason County Garbage here.